What's up guys, Rogue9 here and I'm back with some more Battlefield 1 and this time we're testing the least loved shotgun in the game. Is it as bad as everyone seems to think it is or might we have another hidden gem on our hands? Let's find out. When it comes to the shotguns in Battlefield 1, I think I can safely say that there is somewhat of an imbalance in the pick rate. Leading the pack by a country mile, loved by assault players and loathed by all of those who fall victim to its might is the Model 10A Hunter. The stats as of the 10th of March 2017 show that if you come across a player wielding a shotgun in Battlefield 1 there is a 3 to 1 chance that it's the Model 10A Hunter. And the imbalance doesn't stop here, something we haven't seen with any of the other weapon classes is that with the shotguns the popularity is strictly ranked by weapon type, so the three Model 10A variants are the most popular, then the three variants of the M97, then the three variants of the 12 gauge automatic. In aggregate, the three variants of the Model 10A account for 85.7% of the usage time, the four variants of the M97 account for 12.5% of the total usage time, and all three variants of the 12 gauge automatic combined only account for 1.6% of the total usage time for shotguns in Battlefield 1. It's pretty clear from this that there are very few players that seem to love the 12 gauge automatic. So our test today will focus on the 12 gauge automatic backboard, which since launch of the game has pretty much consistently been the least popular shotgun of all. So we have our winner, and this is normally where we dive straight into the stats, but this time I've made a little bit of a discovery that I think is worth mentioning. If we compare the in-game stats for the 12 gauge automatic backboard and the 12 gauge automatic hunter, we see that the backboard has significantly more control while the hunter variant has slightly more damage. And exactly the same principle applies to the M97 trench gun backboard versus the M97 trench gun hunter. But the detail that needs to be pointed out here is that the difference in damage is down to a more rapid drop off rather than an actual difference in the damage itself. So the real trade off here is recoil versus range and the extra range you get is only 2 meters. What does all of this mean? Well to me shotguns are only useful in very close quarters anyway and I'm not sure that 2 meters extra range is really all that valuable. Especially when you consider that at those ranges some of your pellets are going to start missing already anyway. So my conclusion would be for these shotguns where you will usually need two shots anyway and certainly for the automatic always, it's worth getting the significant advantage in terms of control of the backboard variant over the added distance that the hunter will give you. And with that preliminary conclusion in mind, let's move on to the stats where I'll compare the 12 gauge automatic backboard with its most relevant competitor. Stop, 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 stop. Now, a word of warning here. Shotgun damage modeling is quite complex compared to the damage modeling of other weapons. And even though I love comparing the statistics of different guns and really diving into the numbers, I have to say that even I got a little bit frustrated going over all of the stats that make these guns tick. So if you're interested in finding out in detail how damage modeling is handled for shotguns in Battlefield 1, watch on. On the other hand, if you don't want to run the risk of going mildly insane, you might want to consider skipping to 9 minutes and 50 seconds now, where I will provide a brief summary. For those of you brave enough to venture on, let's do this. When it comes to analyzing the damage capability of shotguns, things get a little bit more complicated than for other weapons. As you can see, the maximum and minimum damage per pellet is pretty much the same for each and every shotgun variant, with the exception of the trench gun sweeper which is slightly weaker. But of course there are so many more factors that go into calculating the damage output for shotguns. Let me first add in the number of pellets that each gun fires to give us sort of a true idea of how much damage it can do. As you can see the automatic variants only fire 11 pellets, whereas the M97 trench gun fires 15 pellets apart from the sweeper which fires 22, and then the Model 10A fires 20. So in terms of the maximum and minimum damage output, the Model 10As have the highest both at close range and further distances, further distances meaning anywhere above 23 meters, followed by the M97 trench gun variants and the 12 gauge automatic variants. The only exception to this rule is the M97 trench gun sweeper which is very strong up close and relatively weak further away. 
But that is still only part of the story here. Another important factor in terms of shotgun damage is the pellet dispersion. The smaller the number, the tighter your grouping will be, which on the one hand means that you'll have to be more precise with your aim when up close, but at the same time the pellets staying closer together also gives you a greater killing potential at distance. So if we examine this stat now, we can see that the automatic backboard has the tightest pellet dispersion of 1.2, while most other shotguns have 1.8. The most significant pellet dispersion goes to the Model 10A factory, and once again the exception that needs to do its own thing completely is the M97 trench gun sweeper, which has a very narrow vertical dispersion but a wide horizontal dispersion, so that means that it throws its pellets out in a wide horizontal line rather than a circular cone, and this really emphasizes its role as an extreme close quarters gun that makes it easier for you to hit targets when you're close, but will make a one-shot kill impossible anywhere above 13 meters, not counting headshots of course. And that's almost it for the damage profile of the shotguns, there is just one last aspect left to look at, and that's the damage drop-off. Let me bring up a graph. And let's just go from left to right. All the way on the left, in green, we have the M97 trench gun sweeper. And even though the damage per pellet is lower than for all of the other shotguns at close range, the large number of pellets it fires and the wide dispersion make it devastating all the way up to 10 meters. Although at that distance you could probably throw the gun at your enemy and do the same damage. Next over on the red line we have the other M97 variants, and for them damage drop-off starts at 12 meters. The damage drop-off for the Model 10A Hunter and Factory and for the 12 gauge automatic backboard all start at 14 meters. Finally, the Automatic Extended and Hunter have the latest damage drop-off of all the shotguns, starting at 16 meters. But are these really significant differences? I mean, 2 meters further or closer? It's really not that much. What you're talking about is all of the shotguns are specialized at very close range, and while the Model 10A can one-shot enemies quite reliably, the M97 sometimes needs a second shot, and the automatic always needs a second shot. How are these different damage capabilities balanced out? Well, with the fire rate. The 12 gauge automatic has almost double the fire rate of the M97, which has almost double the fire rate of the Model 10A. Magazine sizes are all fairly similar, 5 for most shotgun types, 6 for the 10As, and 7 for the automatic extended. The reload animations for the pump action shotguns are exactly the same as are then their reload times, and even though they're slightly different for the automatic shotguns, the time is essentially the same. I mean the difference is a few hundredths of a second. So no difference. The recoil for all of the shotguns is very much proportionate to the damage they do. The Model 10As have the highest recoil, then we have the M97 Sweeper and Hunter, then the Backboard, then the Automatic Extended and Hunter, and then the Backboard. It makes perfect sense that the more powerful guns should also have more recoil, but I don't think it's a very important statistic since the Model 10A shoots so slow that you're not even going to care about the recoil, and for the 12 gauge automatic variants where you do have a high fire rate, the recoil is very manageable. And last, and maybe also least important, is the spread, and I say least important because for all of the shotguns the spread is basically the same except the spread increase per shot and the spread decrease after you stop firing. And again here I would say that these differences are really unimportant because the guns that have a significant spread increase when you start firing have such a low fire rate that it's not going to matter. And that's it, finally. Man, analyzing shotgun damage models, eh? It just doesn't get any better than that. I think a little break is in order to help you recover from that. Feel free to close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And exhale as you relax. Very soon, we will be returning to the video. When it ends, you will feel a deep sense of contentment and a strong urge to hit that like button and share the video to Facebook. Take one last deep breath in and exhale. Open your eyes and let's continue. Welcome back to everyone who's rejoining us right here and allow me to summarize. 
you basically have the three types of shotguns. The most popular one, the Model 10A, has the greatest chance of killing in one shot, and that is balanced out by strong recoil and slow fire rate. On the other end of the spectrum, you have the least popular automatic shotguns, which will always need two shots or more, but have a very high fire rate and are very easy to control. The M97 falls in the middle, it can kill in one shot, but may need two, and therefore has a sort of medium fire rate. And now I've talked a lot about all of the shotguns, this video is really supposed to be about the 12 gauge automatic backboard. It has a very high fire rate which gives it an excellent time to kill up to 19 meters of about a quarter of a second. The pellet dispersion cone is the tightest out of all of the shotguns. And last but not least in terms of recoil it is also number one. These strengths are balanced out by its number one key weakness and that is that it only fires 11 pellets. This gives the gun the lowest maximum and the lowest minimum damage output out of all of the shotguns and means you need at least two shots to kill up to a distance of 19 meters and at least three or more beyond. And that's it now, we're done with theory, let's finally get to field testing this gun. After playing this gun for a while I realized that the best way to utilize it is to play it like an automatico. Use terrain and cover to your advantage to get as close as possible and then don't hesitate to use all of your ammunition on one guy should you need it. Although with some practice and experience you should be able to take out two guys even if they're at full health. And if you're already quite good at one-shotting guys with your Model 10A, then transitioning to the 12 gauge automatic will be quite easy since all shotguns have the exact same muzzle velocity. You don't need to change anything about your lead or point of aim. But the big question is, is this gun any good? Is it useful? Can it be used? And does it maybe deserve to be used more than it currently is? Let me maybe first compare it to its closest competitors, the other automatic shotguns. As mentioned right at the beginning of the video, I don't think that the added 2 meters of reach gives the Hunter variant a significant advantage over this gun. In fact, if I had to choose between the two automatic variants, I'd go with the backboard. But if I had the choice of all three, I have to admit I'd probably go with the extended variant. Having those two extra shots just gives you more margin for error and at a pinch it could even allow you to take out up to three enemies before reloading. And the only drawback you face is a little extra recoil. Of course the pellet dispersion cone is also a little wider for the extended variant, but that's not necessarily a disadvantage. In fact, at close quarters it can make hitting moving targets a little easier. Well darn it, things already don't look great for the little auto backboard if it's not even the best variant of its type. But let me compare it to the Model 10A anyway. Of course the Model 10A's biggest advantage is its immense power. Fueled by the salty tears of your victims you can run across the battlefield and one shot enemies at uncanny distances. But this of course is balanced out with a relatively slow fire rate of about one shot per second. This means that if you're confronted with more than one enemy, you can kill one instantly and then it takes almost a second for you to be able to shoot at the next guy. And if you happen to miss a shot, well then you have to wait almost another second before you can fire again. And this is where I would say the 12 gauge auto in general and also the backboard specifically have a potential advantage. With a fire rate of over 4 shots per second, you could theoretically kill two full health enemies in 0.7 seconds. And that is faster than the Model 10A. Now factor in some panic and a missed shot and where the time for the Model 10A for two targets goes up to two seconds, the 12 gauge automatic can still kill both targets in less than one second. But of course, that advantage comes at a lack of range. So is the 12 gauge automatic backboard a hidden gem? Not quite. If you're playing a wide open map, it can be a real struggle trying to get close enough with this weapon and you might frequently find yourself in situations where you're just unable to engage the enemy. So maybe as with the 1895 trench, this gun will do best in game modes like War Pigeons, Team Deathmatch and Domination where the maps are much smaller and the weaknesses of this gun won't be quite as obvious. And maybe as a final comment I'll add that yes this is not a hidden gem, this is not the secret gun that no one's found yet that is super amazing, but at the same time does it deserve to virtually never be used by anyone? No, of course not. The automatic shotgun variants are very capable and can be a ton of fun to use. So if you've never really tried them or haven't played them in a while, why not go back and give them another go? 
but as always that's just my opinion. And I would love to hear what your experiences with the gun have been, and what did you think of my arguments, am I making sense here? I look forward to reading your responses. And with that guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next episode.